Hello, I'm Doc Hamels again, and uh, I'm the host of Chautauqua Sunrise, and today I will be the host for you on today's show, Chautauqua Candidates. This is a series of six interviews which will be aired during the week of October 3rd through the 9th. Our producer, Chris Burt, invited all candidates for district attorney, county executive, New York State Assembly for the 150th district, New York State um, Senate, the 57th district, and U.S. Congress, the 23rd district. Not all candidates accepted the invitation. This interview is the third in the series of six featuring uh, Mr. Jason Schmidt, who is running for the office of Chautauqua County uh, District Attorney. And now I'd like to welcome Jason to the show, and how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Thanks for uh, accepting our invitation. We feel really strongly that it's important that um, the viewers get to get to know all of our candidates, and so you're you're, you're one of many. So uh, we're we're trying to get people to know who you are and how you think and what you believe in and what you stand for. Now, yeah. uh, you said to me, if I ask you tell tell us a little bit about yourself, you'll draw a blank. So I, how about this? Why do you want to run for district attorney? Let's start there. How's that? Well, uh, why do I want to run? I, he, here's the, the thing, uh, because I care about the community, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I feel that uh, the criminal justice system right now is broken here in Chautauqua County. I feel that there are uh, people out there, uh, victims of crime, who are not uh, obtaining the justice that they deserve. Uh, uh, when people commit harm against other people, they need to be held accountable, and I don't believe that that's happening now. Okay. So, with that being said, how did you get involved in the legal system? What's your preparation and so forth? Well, uh, I, I'm from New York City. I was a, actually a caseworker with the Child Welfare Administration. I used to visit foster homes in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a part of the system when New York City was very aggressive in terminating parental rights. And at the time, uh, what would happen is the, the city would aggressively terminate the foster children's parental rights and then the children would be freed for adoption, but they didn't have adoptive parents. And so we had kids that were lost in the system. Mm. I became very passionate about that and as a result, I, I actually uh, wanted to go to law school to help children and I wrote my uh, law school essay on that. Uh, and I actually wrote a letter to the New York Times which was published because I was genuinely concerned about changing the system. And uh, I've always been an advocate for children and I, I believe that, uh, that ultimately that's what landed me to where I am today in wanting to run for a district attorney. So you, are, were you born and raised in New York? I was born and raised in New York City. So how did you get to Chautauqua County? That's, that's <laughs> like a culture shock, isn't it for you? It is. Well, well listen, uh, after 9-11, you know, I used to work in Midtown Manhattan. I was there when 9-11 uh, happened. Uh, at the time, we made a decision to, you know, make a change of life. Mm -hmm. And someone had turned me on to Chautauqua County, and, and I fell in love with the area. And I literally came here with no connections to the area. I uh, went from working at a big law firm uh, to now, you know, having my own practice. And I came here in 2003. I raised my son in the Fredonia school system. I've uh, lived and maintained a law practice in Fredonia. I uh, was an assistant district attorney and a felony prosecutor in the Chautauqua County District Attorney's Office for a handful of years. I left there and I developed uh, my own criminal defense practice. And I've been doing this uh, work for the last 15 years in state and federal practice. Uh, I uh, try uh, felony cases, and I've done three felony cases this year during COVID. So, so you've, been, you've yeah. been pretty busy. Yeah, there hasn't been any shutdown <laughs> from me. <laughs> Nothing from the mm -hmm. law. Okay. Um, so in New York City, uh, you, you, were, you went to grammar school, high school, and all that right there? Yeah, I, I was raised in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. I uh, was raised by a, a, a single parent, you know, mm -hmm. my mom. She raised my brothers and I, and uh, we grew up in a one-bedroom apartment. And uh, you know, it's something that I've I've uh, tried to communicate to people that you know, because of my upbringing, because I, I came from a very disadvantaged home where we were, you know, we we really were very poor. We ourselves were victims of crime. You know, we had our apartment burglarized. Uh, 
I've had my first bicycle, my first rollerblades, my uh, roller skates rather, uh, skateboard stolen mm. from me, lunch money stolen from me. I mean, I could just go on and on. So really, I mean, I, I, I truly empathize with the victims of crimes and, and, and it's a passion of mine just as, you know, representing and defending children are very important to me as well. Okay, thank you. You and I sat in this very room about four years ago. Yes. And um, you ran for this particular office. Why are you running again? It was never my intention to run again. I'm not a, a, a politician by nature. I'm very uncomfortable, you know, talking uh, to the camera. Mm -hmm. you know. You're doing a fine job. <laughs> you are. But, but, but really, uh, so yeah, I, I ran because initially because I had some ideas on, on how to change the system and bring Chautauqua County criminal justice system into the 21st century and I, and I got that just from practicing all over and, and uh, a lot of the ideas that I had were implemented at the time and I did lose and then when I lost I did what uh, anybody would do, they would just uh, pick up you know, where they left off and mm -hmm. just continue on with life and I wished uh, the current district attorney very well. He was my district attorney too and I never intended to get back into politics. In fact, I threw away all of my signs, those, <laughs> those stupid lawn signs which, which you know, there's th thousands of them, you know, oh thousands and gosh. thousands of dollars spent on them, about five bucks a piece yeah, with are. the stakes. Got rid of them all and everyone said, you, you should just save them just in case and I didn't want to do that and I didn't look at newspapers. I just focused on my practice and went right into a murder trial after that. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, you know, uh, uh, as time goes on, you know, again, I'm in the system, I'm in the courthouse every day. I know what's going on and I know that we can do much better as a county. I know the police deserve better. I know the victims of crimes deserve better. And that's why I'm running for district attorney. Okay. So when you, I, I want to talk about campaigning a little bit. You, you, yeah. you ran four years ago and you're running again. So. How are you approaching it differently? I mean, is it the same message and you're just hoping to get more votes? And I'm not being flippant now. No. But I mean, what are you doing differently? Because I've, I've, I've been in your shoes where I had to run again for an office and I won them. But I mean, it, I had to change some things. So what, do you, what did you do, if any? Well, well, look, the messaging last time, you know, first of all, this idea of messaging and campaigning mm -hmm. is not something I'm comfortable with. I, I, I was very naive about the process and I just felt that I was the better candidate because I had a wealth of experience and I was always a firm believer that you, you don't des deserve the job unless you can show that you could bring something to the table and, and I had, truly had, what I believed were very innovative ideas in order to help the system move along. I mean, there's a game that gets played by good criminal defense attorneys, I know, because I play the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I felt that there were ways to shortcut the process to I I empower the police and prosecutors. And um, the problem with that is that you get kind of mired in, in the weeds when you get into these details, just the way, you know, you can with any, uh, you know, technical area. Uh, and, and I think that my messaging fell short for a lot of people because it's not sexy stuff. You know, mm -hmm. th you know things like you know, specialized prosecution teams eliminating something called the pre-indictment conferences. I mean, none of this stuff is exciting stuff. So in any event, try not to get bogged down in that stuff now. I try instead to you know, tell people who I am, what I'm about, what my experience is, where there are problems now in the system and where we can do so much better and where the voters the residents of Chautauqua County deserve better. Okay. Moving forward, what are your top three concerns about the legal system as it, as it is today? Yeah, so there's a, th there's a failure in the prosecution of felony cases here in Chautauqua County and that's very important because when people get arrested, they get arrested for all kinds of uh, charges. Some of them are low-level charges. They don't even rise to a crime. Those are violations. And then we get into the criminal world and you're into misdemeanors. But then above that are the much more serious crimes. And those are charged as felonies. And they're much more serious because there are truly victims usually of felony level crimes. And those are, you know, homicide, various homicides, various forms of uh, sexual assaults and uh, burglaries, robberies, and so forth. In any event, with respect to those serious crimes, the felony cases, 
the fact of the matter is that they're not being prosecuted right now. Uh, they, the the uh, conviction rate is abysmally low here in Chautauqua County. That's my number one concern is to bring that up. Number two is that those cases in which, you know, the district attorney's office is going forward in trial, they're not doing a very good job. I know this because I'm on the other side. My very first trial in 2020 was against the district attorney. It was a homicide case out of Dunkirk. I won. So I, I want to see that the, what I view is a culture of losing. I want to reverse that. I'd like to bring a winning strategy to the district attorney's office. I think it benefits all of us. There's a residual trickle-down effect uh, that, that impacts not just victims, but, but the police and the community. I want to restore confidence in the criminal justice system. I mean, those are really the two biggest platform positions. Anything beyond that, you know, is just how do we get to that point. But, but truly, uh, I would say the third uh, priority for myself, and, and it's part and parcel of all this, is to restore the relationship between police and prosecutors. It's so important because there is a law enforcement partnership that should exist between police and prosecutors so that together they can put their best foot forward and it has a, a force multiplier effect. Which, which helps you know, to, to combat crime. And we really have a problem here that we're not addressing. And those, those three, are, I would say, are my top platform positions. So what's the root cause of why the DA is in the, the, the department, because it's more than one person, why the department isn't getting convictions? In my view, it's misplaced priorities. Uh, there's, there's a lot of emphasis on lack of funding in their, in, in their view. Uh, the district attorney is more interested in uh, his uh, uh, officer position in a state agency, you know, a district attorney's association. Uh, to me, this position here in Chautauqua County, which is still a relatively very small community, the top prosecutor is supposed to be taking on the most serious cases, handling those himself, taking those to trial. That's what I want to do. Develop prosecutorial trial teams in the district attorney's office, run with the cases, take the most serious cases to trial, work with the police to make sure that we get convictions and not charge inappropriately so that we can't get convictions. You don't want to lose cases at trial. It sends the wrong message to, to the wrong people. And that's what's happening here. So ultimately, uh, I, I think it's just misplaced and misguided uh, policies and practices that are responsible for the situation that the county is in right now, insofar as the criminal justice system. One more thing I would add is that the police are doing their job. They make about 1,000 felony arrests each year. But the fact of the matter is, is that more than 80% of those cases are either reduced or dismissed below the felony level. And that conviction rate, which is 17.4%, I didn't make these numbers up, they're tracked by state agencies. That conviction rate is just shameful, it's unacceptable, and it has to change. What is an acceptable rate? Well, I would say that we have to certainly get it up above 50, 60 percent. I mean, you could, you know, there is a place for plea bargaining in the system. There is a reality that we have to recognize that sometimes cases aren't initially charged correctly, but you should never get down to the, you know, the below 18%. It's just unheard of. It's unprecedented here in Chautauqua County, but it's become our new normal. Over the last four years, the numbers have just continued to drop from a high of 25.7% all the way down to 17.4% felony conviction rate. It's just not acceptable. I don't know this, but do you know what's the state average across the, the New York State? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you that the, the numbers were much higher under uh, District Attorney uh, Foley, who is now our county court judge. They were much higher under uh, Jim Subject, who was the prior district attorney, and John Ward before that. We just never had this type of uh, low end uh, conviction rate. And, and we certainly shouldn't be worried about additional funding. You know, the district attorney's office has uh, obtained thir a 34% increase in its funding in the last uh, four years. And the numbers have gone down instead of up. So the funding has gone up, felony conviction rate has gone down. It's, it's not acceptable. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point in your career, what are some things that you are particularly proud of? You know, I'm, I'm proud of my trial record. I've, I've gone head to head with this district attorney this year. I, in the office last year, I, uh, you know, I most recently ran what appears to be the very first post-pandemic 
trial in New York State, and that was run in Buffalo in the Western District of, of New York Federal Court. Uh, and that uh, took up my August and part of my September, and it just ended. And uh, that was run on the ninth floor of the federal courthouse uh, before Judge Carcara. And so I'm very proud that I was part of that process. I'm proud of the, you know, the various cases that I've handled. I'm most of all proud of the people that I've represented and that I've been able to you know, achieve a, a record of successful wins in the courtroom and uh, been able to work hard on behalf of my clients. I'm also, you know, listen, outside of all that, I'm, I'm just proud that I was able to put my son through school, that my son is doing well. I, I just like everybody else in this community, ultimately, all we want to do is work, earn a fair living, take care of the people that we love, and ultimately, you know, hopefully leave the world in a better place than we've, you know, than, than we, we found it and be left alone, you know, and not be uh, bothered by, by crime and, and, and other things. You mentioned uh, you were in the DA's office at one time. Who was that under? That was under, uh, I was hired by Jim Subject, mm -hmm. our former district attorney, and then David Foley was, uh, was the district attorney when I left the DA's office. Okay, so had you stayed with the, uh, the district, uh, the, the attorney, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> district attorney's office, yeah. I can say it, um, do you think you would have made some changes if you had stayed or? Sure, I think times change and we, we need to keep up with the times. So absolutely, I think that if I had stayed, I, I, I certainly uh, you know, would have seen uh, different changes in the office. But you know, when, when uh, each district attorney runs their office as they see fit, uh, and I had moved on and I uh, turned to the other side, uh, criminal defense uh, work, and ultimately it made me a better criminal attorney because I, I've worked both sides of the system. And the truth is, is that the insight that I have and how to win a trial and, and, and to, to, you know, to see where the weaknesses are in, in some of the cases that are brought by the district attorney's office, that insight, you know, that's knowledge and experience that I get to bring to the DA's office when I'm back in there. So I, I, I do think that uh, I'm only just, you know, much more experienced and, you know, and knowledgeable as a result of my criminal defense work. <clears throat> Years ago when I went from uh, teaching into administration, many of my colleagues said I had gone to the dark side. Yeah. Did you get that when you went from prosecutor to defender? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a dramatic change, right? You know, when I was a prosecutor, so I, I, pro I was a, the felony prosecutor for the North County. I prosecuted felonies out of the city of Dunkirk, village of Fredonia, predominantly in the North County. And I got really close with the police. I mean, I've had the police inside my home, you know, working at my dining room table, so we were prepping for trial. So a lot of cops drive motorcycles. And I remember, you know, I, I didn't know anything about motorcycles, so I bought what I thought was sort of like a a Harley, but it was a Honda Shadow. <laughs> and, and I got made fun of by these guys, and, mm -hmm. but we all went down to West Virginia together and so forth. So in any event, I, I developed good relationships with them, but then when I left, yes, I, you know, it's very difficult to then go, you know, the perception is you've gone on the dark side. And frankly, there's a lot of you know, resentment when you've got to put some of these guys on the stand and you've got to you know, challenge them in evidentiary hearings because you're just trying to serve your, your client's best interest. But if I could say this, it's, because, it's because of that, those, you know, th what I've done on the defense side that the city of Dunkirk PBA, the Police Bene Benevolent Association, those police have chosen to endorse me because they specifically, you know, reference the fact that they know what it's like to go against me. They know what it's like for me to be on their side. And I was very proud to accept that endorsement. It's the first DA endorsement that they've given. Wow. And they, they recently gave it to me and I, and I appreciate that. And it's also very, uh, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a powerful statement to do that in the face of the incumbent, you know, in order to, mm -hmm. you know, to endorse the challenger. So. I, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, because like I said, I, I was asked if I had gone to the dark side. But I have a question that's maybe a little bit more practical. Okay, so you, you work for the DA who, who prosecutes, says you, 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 you create, you've done a crime and I'm, I'm going to make you pay for that. Now you go to the other side of the of the courthouse, and now you're saying my my client's innocent, and and I can tell you why, and now you're going back to the other side mm -hmm. <laughs> to prosecute. Now is there? We know there's repeat offenders, okay? Right. Now, what happens? 
if you're the district attorney and in comes one of your old clients, how's that work? Well, that's going to be a problem. Obviously, uh, you know, I ha you know there are ethical rules that prevent me from uh, prosecuting cases, and then we'll assign other prosecutors and special prosecutors in order to deal with those situations. Um, what I would say to that is that we have a, a criminal justice system, mm -hmm. and it works, but it only works if you have aggressive defense attorneys and aggressive prosecutors. And you each go against each other, and you know the prosecutor's job is to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, and the defense attorney's job is to pick at it and, and to look at closely to make sure that all the rules were followed, to make sure that the prosecutor is able to connect the dots and get a conviction, to take a case from the starting line to the finish line. And that's how justice gets served, but it doesn't get served if only one side's doing its job and the other isn't. So ultimately, what good defense attorneys do is they challenge the people's case, and that's mm -hmm. what they're doing. It's not so much that they're screaming that their clients are innocent, but they're performing a very important constitutional and societal function of challenging an accusation. And that requires then a very good district attorney that knows what they're doing in order to overcome those challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, if you're elected district attorney, how will you measure your success? What, what, how, how, do you, how do you know you're going to be doing a good job? Well, look, you know, the one thing that I, I've said is that those, uh, those numbers that I cited earlier, those come out of the Division of Criminal Justice Services and the Office of Court Administration. These are state agencies that actually track the, the, the numbers, the number of arrests that police make and then the reportings of each individual court. And those numbers are important, okay, because those numbers really are a, a, a litmus test as to how well the district attorney's office is performing. I'm going to put those numbers, those charts, right on the wall here. I'm not going to hang pictures on my wall. Those charts are going to go on the wall. Every prosecutor is going to be held responsible for those numbers. So for me, the, 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 the way that I can you know, be certain that I am doing my job is to take those numbers and turn them around. Now listen, I know that these cases aren't about numbers, they're about people. But that's the whole reason why I'm running because what happens here is that every time the district attorney's office pleads down or loses a case, there's a victim that hasn't obtained justice. And that's the worst possible you know, position to be in. To be harmed by somebody and to have no legal recourse available to you, that's really what the district attorney's office is designed to do. It's really the office of last resort for victims. Okay, now, I am in possession of a general understanding of how the district attorney's office works, because we all watch cop shows and lawyer shows. Right. So how does the district attorney's office work? So let me, let me start a scenario. A felony case comes to you, and how, do, how does it, the police make an arrest, and they're charged with a felony. So how, walk me through that. How do, what does the DA office do, or the DA? I, I don't know how it works. Yes, yeah, so, so when the police, look, you know, the district attorney's office receives cases in different ways, right? So the easiest thing to understand is that the police make the arrest, right? They file the initial complaints, and then at some point there's a handoff made to the district attorney's office. So the, the police find that there is probable cause, a legal standard, to believe that somebody committed the crime that they're accused of, and they file the necessary paperwork, and they process the case, and they make the arrest. And they do that based upon a number of you know, grounds, right? They, they could uh, actually roll up on the scene and actually witness the crime themselves, or they could get called to the scene, they could be conducting an investigation. In any event, whether it's at the front of the, of the case or after the arrest has already been made, at some point they are involving the, di the district attorney's office, and it's that office which is responsible for taking that case from arrest or the initial charge to conviction. And sure, it's the job of the district attorney's office to administrate justice, to make sure it's done fairly, and that's okay. important. So who are the players in the district attorney's office? Who are, who, who's, who's in there? Who, who says, okay, I'll take this, job, I'll take this case, or uh, I, I can't take this case, or I have expertise? How's that work? Well, you, you've, got the, you've got the top prosecutor, the district attorney himself, okay. All right. and I believe firmly that that person 
needs to be the person trying those cases, the most serious cases, mm -hmm. and then you've got a number of assistants that work under that person, and they're taking the less serious cases. And sometimes they're assisting the, the, the uh, district attorney with the prosecution of those cases. So, we, so, oh, so there's an assumption yeah. here, I'm just asking questions now, sure. that the district attorney is the most qualified lawyer in the office? Should be. Okay. Should be the one that's taking those cases. That's that's the person ultimately who's who has to answer to the public when there's a dismissal, when there's a not guilty verdict, mm -hmm. when there's a um, when there's a, a mistrial. I mean, these are th this is some of the, the you know the negative results that have plagued the current district attorney's office now okay. for the last four years. So you have a DA, the district attorney, who's elected, and then you have how many? I believe right now there are 12 assistant district attorneys at and the office. And they are appointed or hired? They're or? hired by the district attorney. Okay. Yep. okay. And they're assigned to various cases, and, that, and, that, and that's solely up to the discretion of, of the district attorney. Okay. So in other words, you might have certain uh, DA, ADAs, assistants, who mm -hmm. are assigned to certain courts. You could have others that are assigned to specific prosecution areas. One of the things that I was very important, one of my platform positions was we needed to have more specialized prosecutors, narcotics prosecutors, which they've now implemented, you know, sexual assault prosecutors, you know, child, you know, you know we'll call them special crimes, you know, special victims. I mean, we need to have the, the most qualified experts in, in, in each field individuals who are there to be trained in that specific area of law because it's a broad area, right? I mean, crimes happen across the board. We don't just have homicides. We have sexual assaults. We have, you know, robberies. We, we have all kinds of, we have drug cases, narcotics. I mean, so, so in any event, there are assistants. Uh, it's up to the district attorney to determine which cases he or she is going to take on. And one of my, uh, you know, pledges is that I'm going to take on those most serious cases. And there's going to be a ton of them because they've just been backlogged during the pandemic. Right. Okay, folks, you've been watching uh, Chautauqua Candidates. My guest today has been Jason Schmidt, who's running for the district attorney's office. And if you want to watch the show again or pass it on to your friends, it's going to be shown daily at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m., October 3rd through the 9th. Jason, I promised you you'd have the last say, so you got about a minute left. Don't worry about the clock. Take a minute and uh, tell the folks whatever you want to tell them. I just want everyone to understand that uh, their vote on November 3rd is very important right now. Uh, sure, we're going to be voting for the president, but we've got two big countywide elections, and I'm running for one of those. That's the district attorney position. I believe that there's a problem here in Chautauqua County. I believe that people are literally getting away with murder. And I don't mean to be melodramatic about it, but, but there is a problem that needs to be addressed. When we have the, a dismissal rate or a reduction rate uh, in the most serious cases that we, we witnessed here in the, over the last four years, something needs to be done. It's time to restore confidence in the system. It's time to uh, elect somebody who has real trial experience, who has a record of achievements and wins in the courtroom, and that's who I am. And I want to take my experience and put it and bring it on behalf of the voters and the residents here in Chautauqua County, and that's why I'm asking for their vote. Thanks a lot. Okay, folks, we'll see you next time uh, on Chautauqua Candidates. I'm Doc Hamels, and thanks for uh, taking some time to, to watch the show. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.